health insurance companies have traditionally not been very supportive of behavioral health treatments. And this comes out of the legacy of the advent of managed care that occurred in the late 80s. And many of you remember um, you know, the early companies that started like um, Aetna and United Healthcare and um, you know, things like these companies that suddenly you know, began to sort of go outside of the Blue Cross Blue Shield paradigm. And the promise of these companies was that they would go to an employer and generally speaking was an employer and to say to them, well, look, you're paying 20 cents on the dollar for healthcare. Why are you spending all that money? You should be spending only 15 cents on the dollar for your healthcare benefits. And we can help you with that by lowering the cost of care. And how did they do that? Well, the first thing they did was they created networks of providers and they got providers to accept a discount. Okay, I understand that. Most people understand that. That in return for more volume, you're gonna give an employer and insurance company a discount, okay? But what was the other thing that they did? They noticed that a lot of folks were getting behavioral care and they noticed that there were a lot of outpatient sessions that seemed to be not very evidence-based because we were not getting measurements from many providers about whether depression was improving or not improving. Well, guess what? Most health plans began to ratchet that down significantly, deny tremendous coverage uh, for both outpatient care, which was a disaster, and then also begin to deny inpatient mm -hmm. care. And then uh, in the Affordable Care Act, we began to have this parity regulation. And many of us thought that there would be hope in that because that established for the first time that you could not treat a behavioral health condition different than a physical condition which meant if you're not limiting the mm. care for sickle cell disease or heart disease, you can't limit the care for depression, okay? But there are all of these exclusions that people are not aware of. Like if you're a employer of a small plan, well, you don't have to follow that regulation. Mm. Um, or if you're a, a, I hate to say this, but non-ERISA, meaning a union plan, you don't have to follow that either. So there are all of these exclusions and then on top of that, the enforcement has been lax. So this has been really one of the areas that uh, folks like myself and some of the specialty societies have been very active in um, finding cases where uh, health insurance companies have been systematically denying parity and treatment. 